What's up, everyone? It's Ed from Bar Stars, and today we'll be having a sit down with Rain Bennett. He's a documentary filmmaker, Emmy nominated on the movie Raise Up. It's a catasthetics documentary that traces its origin all the way to its current state. If you don't know what it is, check out the trailer. These guys are doing something that I never saw done before. People knew who I was once I got off the plane. Some of them were like rock stars playing calisthenics. Watching this thing grow is just crazy. Years ago, there was no such thing as extreme calisthenics. This was all new. I think this is one of the fastest growing sports. But I don't understand how the government's not getting involved in this global movement. The minute it catches on, it will explode. People started getting tired of going to the gym. All you need is gravity and the ground. It was a culture that was here before. The history is going back centuries. It's rhythmic, it's strength, it's endurance. Coordination, balance, everything. It's being in tune with yourself. There's a character that's associated with this. It's a spirit of friendship, happiness, and uh, support. You become family, you become friends, you become brothers. It means much more. Bring your water, bring your gloves, and bring your heart, you know? Calisthenics transcends status. It's never like exclusive. It encompasses the entire family. It's more like a social movement because it's more for the kids. What we're doing is just use this sport as a tool. This is saving lives, saving communities, and bringing families together. It's bettering the hood from what I see. It started from community building to personal training to to sports events. Lo and behold, it became like a, a phenomenon. People are really referring to this as a whole worldwide community. It's a competition, but it's a competition within a community. This will be the year that sets the rules and makes the standard of how street workout competitions will be in the future. I'd love to see it evolved as a proper sport, but then I'd also be worried. This explosion is really good, but I feel a bit threatened. I think it's spreading and commercializing in a really big way. It's up to the people that really want to take care of the culture to really keep it. There was only could be one love, one respect, and one bar. I just want to see it become a way of life. So I hope it never gets destroyed and something that keeps going forever and ever. I can't wait to see what the future holds. This sport will live. To me, it's an attitude towards life. The bar changed me. It's still shocking for people to come up and, and tell me I helped change their life. If I were to leave this earth and nothing changes, I haven't done my job. And when I say this sport saved my life, I mean it saved my life. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for this, this sport right here. You don't know how to push your weight up. It's going to save your life. So everyone, we're here with Rain Bennett, the documentary filmmaker of Raise Up. And we're going to go deeper into the film. So Rain, so like to introduce yourself. Give you a little backstory and how you got uh, involved. In the calisthenics world? And filmmaking in general, okay. and then if you go into calisthenics. Yeah, well, uh, I've always been an athlete, so I was always into working out in all kinds of different sports. Um, I started filmmaking, I was always into to movies and television as, as a kid, and so I went to a school for filmmaking. Um, I started working on independent, low-budget films. I graduated, or graduated around 2005, and I actually started off acting. And uh, so I would get roles in these movies that were just independent films, wouldn't pay any money. And then I started working like on the crew. They were like, yeah, you want to work two jobs for free? Sure. <laughs> so I learned that way. And uh, I just started working in, in the industry. Uh, man, I started shooting like wedding videos and sports videos, anything that I could do. And then that slowly turned into uh, documentaries. I started training under documentary filmmakers um, and doing some PSAs, which are public service announcements. And... Um, and web stuff and some television shows and stuff like that. Now, through all this time, I was always working out and I got into boxing. And that's kind of what led me here. Uh, I competed for a couple years. Wasn't something I wanted to do professionally, you know what I mean? It was just something I liked doing. Working out and, you know, uh, learning a new thing, right? I always wanted to. Uh, then I started teaching. And around that time, I'd say this was probably 2006 or seven, seven or eight, I, like most people, saw it on YouTube. Um, what led me there was, um, and I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, but it was like, uh, learning about like the art of 52 blocks. And that kind of led me cause I was going down that rabbit hole searching and that led me to, to giant and the bartenders. Um, real and quick, uh, 52 blocks is a urban, uh, self-defense system you say? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an urban martial art. Yeah. And it's kind of mythical and some people don't believe it really exists. Some people do. Some people <laughs> said Tyson knew it a little bit, you know, it's very, did, yeah. very big on the forearms 
and elbows and stuff and it looks really really cool and I was like reading books on that and the giant uh, giant knows it and was I saw some videos that he you know he used to do but it was then it led to the bartender stuff so I started seeing the workouts the workouts blew my mind as they did most everyone else's but as I've said many times before uh, what I really liked was similar to boxing the shifting of body weight like going from explosive to controlled and smooth flawlessly you know what I mean and just shifting your body weight around it looked like a dance it looked like the rhythm of, of, of boxing I was just like whoa what is this so I started training that and implementing that into my boot camp classes at that time and just doing what I could do that was you're just doing pull ups and like letting your hand leave the bar you're like oh shit <laughs> you know so what I mean you're also a fitness instructor at the time yeah I was teaching boot camps and boxing fitness right so not like really combat boxing I did that I did teach that later uh, with, a, with a college in North Carolina um, but uh, but yeah, just like punching bags and just using for fitness and then like a boot camp. So I started doing like the freestyle push-ups with my classes and just like like Doc G doing the plank boogie and stuff like that, like basic moves, but putting rhythm on it and freestyle having fun. And at this point, you had no communication with anyone from Cosmetics. No, just a fan watching on YouTube, like like most of us, right? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, from then, I. I uh, I was hired to do a, this was like the turning point in 2009, eight or nine, I was hired to do a public service announcement for Shaw University, which is an HBCU in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it was about, uh, substance abuse. And I didn't want to tell a bunch of 20 year olds, like, just say no, like to drink it. You know what I mean? Like I did, PSAs can be real cheesy and stuff. So I was like, I want to do something that's like what I feel like I go through. Like I drink, but I don't like how I feel afterwards in the morning. I'm ambitious, I'm trying to get stuff done, I'm trying to stay in shape, like it doesn't help any of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was like, what message can I send? Just like, yo, just invest in something that's gonna pay dividends back to you. You know what I mean? Spend your time and your money at a place uh, that's gonna give you something, feel you be- make you feel better in the morning. And so I was like, you know what? Like all the themes of the stuff the bartenders were saying is like what I wanna implement. I was like, We've got a little budget here. Like, let me try to, to reach out to them, see if they want to be involved. Because number one, this would make a sick uh, 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 video PSA from my point of view. Plus, having them involved, it would be it would be dope. And I reached out on MySpace and got in touch with now, who is uh, to bring it all full circle, a uh, co-producer on the film, Dr. G from the Bartenders, and a great great friend of mine. And he hit me back on MySpace, and he got the vision immediately because I understood what the message they were trying to send was. And uh, the guy who hired me, I told him, I pitched him the idea. I was like, these dudes are going to bring it. They're going to come from Harlem. They're going <laughs> to, it's going to be amazing. And he was like, I'm sold. You know, yeah. so they worked out their deal between them and Giant and Chaos and Transformer and Doc and maybe somebody else drove down in a van from New York to North Carolina. And once I did the, once I did the PSA, I was like, yeah, this is, all right, there's something bigger here. And that was kind of the, the seed. And what year was it again? 2009. So at that point, you felt inspired to pursue. I felt inspired, and we. I remember we sat down, and had lunch in the in the cafeteria, and Giant was like blown away. Beforehand, this was really cool. I'd gone up to visit my friend in Brooklyn, and I set up a meeting in like April or August. We were shooting in September to meet Giant. And I didn't think Giant was gonna come. It was to meet Doc because he's the one I've been talking with. And they came, and we had lunch in Harlem, and I showed him the script that I wrote, and I wrote for what Giant to say, and he was like. Who, like it was like just he was like this sounds just like me you know he's like blown away it's like who is this little white boy from North Carolina who like wrote wrote it like it came out of his mouth I'm like yeah I've been following you like I listened to you man I get it uh, so they were all in you know he was not like you know some random person hitting you up on the internet you like you're not sure their mo- their motivation or whatever um, but Doc got it you know because we talked a lot more so he understood that I understood so afterwards and it was a great time and we had a huge crowd and made a really good project I mean a lot of people who uh, follow me and also follow the game remember that they really liked it it was 90 seconds and they the were PSA, like yeah. I want to see more you know I talked to Q about it a lot he still he still loves it but yeah, that's really well done thank you thank you I, I was really I loved I still love that project and uh, oh man it featured like on a side note it features Rhapsody who's on Rock Nation right now a uh, female rapper she, oh, was, yeah. she was the one playing basketball in 2009 oh, wow. she was a friend of mine and she's like killing it on top of the game right now she's on Kendrick's album she's like that's crazy yeah it's nuts I'm so happy small world small world um, so afterwards you know, we had a long day and uh, we sat down to eat in the uh, cafeteria and, and I remember we started talking about like, man there's you guys got something going on here you know we need to do a bigger project and started talking about the documentary and they were all in and then uh, 
you know, I was in North Carolina. I actually, you know, coincidentally ended up moving to New York the next year, 2010. And we still, we slowly started turning the wheels at that point, but nothing really, we didn't hit record yet. You know, we're just kind of talking about it and trying to make it happen. So after, so in 2010, you eventually started the documentary? I would say 2012. 2012. Yeah, okay. uh, 2010. Like, there's a, you know, any projects like these, there's a long process of development. Like, you have the idea, you think if it's worth pursuing, you flesh it out a little bit more, maybe it dies there. Maybe you write a script, maybe you get some interest, maybe it dies there. Yeah. Maybe you get more interest, maybe you get people committed, maybe you get some money, maybe it dies there. There's like a long process and a lot of chances for film projects to go away and sometimes it comes back you had a talk so many directors have a project they wanted to do 15 years ago and now that they're like 50 they're finally able to do it you know so uh that 2010 to 2000 beginning of 2012 about a year and a half was just like talking about it i was shooting some content with them i was learning because when i moved up to new york is when i learned about you guys and learned about barbarians and learned about beasts and I mean, I knew about Beast from seeing him in the bartender stuff, but just I, Wingate, like all the other teams, Highlanders. The whole culture and right. the realm of Melbourne. Right. I realized, that's when I realized, because all I really knew previously was the bartenders. Then I realized it was a whole New York community, and I'm like, okay, there's like 20 teams in New York. Like, this is really something, you know? I saw the social movement, but then I saw that it was big, and um, I wasn't the only one. There was a couple other people trying to do TV shows around that time. Yeah. Like, they saw uh-huh. some something rising from within the streets of New York. And I did too. I just had a little bit more commitment and longer game, I would say. You yeah. know? And maybe, I don't know, maybe a better vision, you know what I mean? I was closer to the culture because I fell in love with the heart of it and not just the spectacle of it. Yeah. That's what catches your eye, but what really helped me was the beauty of the movement from the core. You know what I'm saying? The community aspect. Right, right, right. And, and how it changed lives. Like, that's what touched me. Of course, it looks cool when you're doing Superman push ups and like muscle ups and just putting style to it. Yeah. But, uh, it was more to me, which is why I'm still here. <laughs> so you were filming. So what's the duration of your filming from 2011 to 2012 is when 2012, I first okay. first recorded. That's when we first met, you know, at Tompkins yeah. Square Park, and we shot some there. Um, and I got your first interviews and Giants and a few, you know, the first people that were like on board. It took a lot to get people uh, um, interested because again, you, you're you're kind of breaking the ice with people you don't know, and yeah. they're like, "Who is this person? This is my life." You know, I'm not just gonna let anybody come in here and like tell my story. You what's be represented his, correctly, right? What's my, what's my motivation? So I had a lot of, you know, not difficult conversations, but just things like that to work through. Like, hey guys, you know, so and so, I'm trying to do this film in the bar community, blah blah blah, and they're like, some people want to be involved. Some people would say, well, I'm not cool with this person. And I'm like, it's not like a promo video. It's about all everybody, you yeah. know. Um, but 2012 is when I literally hit record for the first time on this on this film. And when did you end? <laughs> Not that long ago. Let's see. Um, 2014. Um, maybe some in 2015, like some last minute interviews or something like that. Yeah, like the intro of the movie I shot in 2015. Things like that. But the the mass, I spent two, two years to two and a half filming it. One big year, which would be 2013. 2012 was the beginning. A few interviews here and there. I traveled to Riga. And got that stuff, and that was like okay. That's what showed me the worldwide aspect. And I don't mean to jump ahead too much, uh, but 2012, 13, and 14. So between two and three years of of, of filming. But uh, I would say 13 was the meat of it, and 2012 and 14 was a little bit less. So it started in New York, mm-hmm. uh, your your film, and then where did the film take you from there? Because first you came and. Uh, you realize the bartenders because you had worked with them previously. Then once you got out there, you realize there's more. Yeah. And then from there, you realize there was even more. Right. So, at, uh, so the trip to Riga in 2012, and I'll give, I'll, I'll set that up a little bit. I saw that world championship, street workout championship in 2011 that you were invited to because we saw the pictures. You know, I was, I knew you at that point and was following what you guys were doing. Um, Before that, did you know it was an international thing? I didn't. I just saw like the pictures, you know what I mean, afterwards. And I saw, you know, I was following y'all, so I saw that. And I don't know who shared it, but I just saw the pictures. I clearly remember seeing Docell. I don't know, he's so magnetic, you know what I mean? I just remember seeing him up on stage and just that smile of his. And so I'm like, what are these guys? I remember Alexander Borisov, you know, his bald head. (laughs) I just remember certain images. I remember seeing you up there. 
so I reached out to Morris around that time because I was like, okay, I'm doing a New York story, but there's like there's something going on in the world here. Like, I think I kind of got to follow this path, which is the beauty of documentary filmmaking is like, you start off somewhere and like a direction you want to go and a basic like outline, but it yeah. takes you wherever it takes you. If I'm following, you know, you, you and your wife or whatever, and your wife gets sick, God forbid, like then my story changes, you know what I mean? And yeah. your story changes. And if I'm following your story, then it is what it is. So it went worldwide and I reached out to Morris and I said, hey man, I'm doing this documentary. I think I'd like to come see you guys next year. And I give Morris a lot of credit for this because he said this then. It's like, okay, we Skyped. He had broken English, which is much better now. And he was like, sure, you're welcome to come. We will treat you like one of the athletes. We will put you up. You know, if you can get here, we'll put you up. We'll feed you. We'll put you in the hotel with all the athletes. I'm like, dope, what, that's awesome. What a nice guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he said, but, I think just doing a movie about like some New York teams and then this this championship like isn't really a complete movie. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's not all it's going to be about, but it's just where where I'm at right now, but he was very very insightful of him and very accurate. Um so I started filming in 2012, you know, um got some interviews with you I think at that point and and like I said Giant and um then that was summertime, July. Uh, or something when Riga came up now this was a crossroads and I've hit this point in my life a lot of times uh, where I didn't have much money left I had a girlfriend and we were we were struggling we were living together um, just living in New York you know how that is and it was basically my last thousand dollars and probably should have gone to Bills and I was like man I don't know I feel this pool like something need, I feel like I need to go you was, you was already in Rigo this was no this, this, was, in, this was deciding if I'm gonna go on this trip because I it was a gamble like I didn't know what I would get out of it but I saw it was pretty cool and I saw that this next year was like gonna be even bigger and so I gambled on it. I spent basically my last thousand dollars on going there and um, boy it was the right decision because that trip it's where I met everyone else and, well, first of all, realized that it was a worldwide community that started and was inspired by the same people, pretty much, um, a worldwide community, and that's who I traveled to visit and film and stay with the next year, which really, you know, really was the changing point in, in the movie, um, in the story and in the movie-making process. So um, that's when I realized, like, yeah, like you said, it started with the bartenders of what I saw, that community. And I moved to New York and saw that community. Then I went to Riga and saw the whole global community. I was like, wow, like somehow I've fallen into this position where I followed this line that took me and now I'm the guy in the world that's making this documentary on this culture yeah. that's like rising super fast. The first year was like, what, 10 countries. The next year was 20. Like that's already crazy growth for whatever you're doing. You yeah. know, double in one year is great. So I was just like, all right, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> like, let's go. So what are some of the countries and uh, even throw out some of the names of the people or teams you've met during the process of the movie? Yeah, so um, there's a few. I mean, you guys were huge. You guys were huge. Um, I mean, we, we, we named some of the New York teams already internationally. Yeah, yeah. Internationally, like, there's a few very strong teams that got going. I mean, you had a couple of chapters of Bar Stars in, like, Sweden and France that were that were big there. But I got to shout out, like, Barbario from Spain, one of the OG crews from there. Um, uh, Bar Monsters, man, from Am Amsterdam. They were... Uh, they were huge. Uh, I spent some time in Norway with the Bar Bangers and then with Team Physics yeah. a little bit later, which is Ahmed's, Ahmed's crew. Um, let's see. Um, there was a lot of individuals that weren't part of like big teams, like Petter and you know people like that. Um, then that's the, also the first time I met a lot of the Russians yeah. and Ukrainians and just you know the post-Soviet countries. Uh, so people like Dennis Menon, people like Ether, people. Uh, what countries are they from? You know, like uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, Croatia. yeah, Ukraine. Petr was from Croatia. Um, How many different countries you visited just for the film? Just for the film, I think it was like thirteen to fifteen in in, in two thousand thirteen, and not all of them were huge. Like because we also spent time in places that were very young. Um, like you know, Equatorial Guinea and Uganda and Taipei for the first World Cup. Yeah. Um, in places where the, it was that was my favorite part was working with people that were kind of new to the game. Like 
I spent time in Madrid with people like Dosel, been doing it for seven years since he yeah. was a teenager. I remember seeing his videos a uh, right. long, long time ago. And then on the flip side, I go to somewhere like Barcelona with the Spartans, Spartans, Taraco, I can't, I can't remember their, their second name, but uh, they're like pretty big now. But back then, it was literally they just started out. And so they want to just learn. And yeah. so because I had a fitness training background, I, I was able to teach them the basics. You know what I mean? I wasn't like elite by any means, but I could teach them how to, simple, thing, simple things like how to breathe yeah. when they're like trying to hold a static or something like that. Um, and uh, that's the part that I, that I really enjoy. But yeah, man, I, I lived out of a bag for like eight, six to eight months uh, just just traveling around with with one camera and a couple of little pieces of equipment and, and shot the film. It was a crazy journey. And what are some of the things you've seen that uh, was the same no matter what country you're in? And what things were different yeah, no yeah. matter what country you were in? You know, there was more that was the same. Um, the culture is the same. The culture to me is the same uh, in terms of what brings them to the bar. Like, for instance, they listen to the same music. You know what I mean? I heard a lot of the, the workout music that is coming out of hip-hop culture played in the Netherlands, played in London. Played, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I didn't go to Ukraine and I did go to Ukraine and Russia, uh, but I didn't spend as much time in the parks as you did there. You know, those were for uh, competitions and stuff. Uh, but still, like that, that was very much the same. And they listen to Russian hip hop. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and the camaraderie, like that was one thing that I saw. Like just being there, no matter if I was in Croatia with Petar and and uh, Daniela, his girlfriend. Um, just you're just hanging out you bring your bags for the day and your waters and like you just you're just at the park all day like that 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 brotherhood was was there everywhere People, everyone was rooting for you no matter what yeah doing. and it's just fun and happy and you're playing with each other and there's that healthy competition like your boy hits this move and you're like oh I gotta try that or like how, you know you're learning from each other like how do you get that like where do I put my hands to catch that um, the park vibe is phenomenal man Barbario like in Leganes and, and outside of Madrid Man, music, you know what I mean? Bumping, dancing, jump rope, push-ups, pull-ups, you know, dips, high fives, smiles, you know what I mean? A little bit of food, <laughs> like, just fun, man. I love walking with a crew, a crew of people to the park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That moment is real cool for me because you're just walking through the streets. People are looking at you because they know something's up with you. You know, they see everybody's like buffing in shape, but they don't really know what it is and you're just all having a good time. But that's, I've never really thought about that, that until now, like, I've been with you walking to to um to Dighton, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with the crew, like that. I love that walk up for some reason. I never really thought about that until right now. That's true. It's mm -hmm. good like mm -hmm. man, the hype is building up. On the right, way. right. And it's like the anticipation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like, I agree. Um. So there's gonna be some people missing in the film. I think uh, when it comes to if you bring it more to let's say 2016 or yeah. 2017, and. Um, uh, I see this in some of the comments and the <clears throat> teasers. So, if you had to address like uh, why certain people weren't in the film, uh, what would you say? Yeah, that's a that's a good question and hard to say. Uh, the filming process stopped around 2014. Like we get to about that point, and not even quite that point, but we just just hit 2014 in in the story, and uh, and and so the game has progressed so much and changed so much in those two years you know or th going on three years that uh well first of all obviously we, we weren't filming uh at this point so there's a whole new group of stories to tell and people to follow and stars to to look up to uh but back to that word i keep saying it's a story and there's a lot of people that were filmed that didn't have a end up having a huge role and that's something that you talk to any director if they're making hollywood big budget films with 300 million dollar budgets or whatever um it's always a hard part as a director, you know, that's why you have director's cuts, right? They put back in the scenes that they had to cut out because you have to keep the story progressing forward. And so I had to cut out a lot of stuff that I really love, friends of mine that just, it didn't help the story progress. You saw earlier versions of this movie that was close to two hours yeah. and it gets really boring. And here's the thing, people like you, people like me, and people like your audience could probably watch a nine hour film of calisthenics, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you just love it, just like you're watching nine hours of YouTube videos of people yeah, exactly. doing it, right? But this story deserves to be told or and heard by a wider audience because it's such an inspirational story and so many people don't know about what we do and that's what my goal is, is to get it out there to the mainstream that they have to have it concise and understandable to watch it for 80 minutes knowing nothing beforehand and go away understanding what they just saw. The earlier versions, there was too many characters, too many countries, 
people got lost. Now we had we used graphics to help with that. So we'd show transitions going to another country so people would see, oh, I'm in Spain now. Yeah. You know, we used a timeline little graphic showing like, oh, yeah, that was it's cool. 2005 now. We didn't have that in the beginning. It's like, where are we? Who is this person? You know, uh, We always hit, hit you with the person's title You know, so you remember you know, because I know these people because I've been rocking with them for five years. But, you know, if it, your regular audience might, might forget who's who. Um, and then ultimately, like just to put it simply, like it's 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 hard to get everybody coordinated. There's people I wanted to get in the film that we just never could link up. It's just a logistics matter, you know. Um, but ultimately, I'm very, very proud of the job that we did. I think the significant characters are represented. And even people that weren't physically in the film were referenced in the film if they had an impact. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so we tried our best to uh, to make it a really comprehensive documentary, but at the end of the day, 100%, it has to be a good story to follow first. It has to be entertaining first. You know, it's not a uh, anthology. It's not an encyclopedia. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a it's a movie. It's entertainment. Yeah. You're supposed to go and have a fun time and and, and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think another aspect that has to do with it is uh, people's lives change. So. Someone who's like super hardcore and kind of sucks in the movie, yeah. eventually uh, maybe has kids mm-hmm. or yeah. got a new job or had to change location or, you know, any number of things can happen in your life where Absolutely. you may still do kind of but you're not as prominent or as, as involved yeah. as you were before. And with an extreme sport as like uh, freestyle kind of I feel like that happens even on a yearly basis. Mm-hmm. You'll see someone that just comes up from you or someone who is a... Uh, uh, older just kind of take a step back yeah and another thing I'll say and this is this applies uh, to, to a lot of things like I tried my best to be as objective and balanced and accurate as possible but with a movie it's our mantra with this was to be historically entertaining it's got to be, be entertaining first you know I as a fan uh, it's really important for me to be authentic because I care about the culture I'm not just somebody from the outside I'm a part of it so I wanted to be as accurate as I could be but Truth is is many times subjective. Like your truth is different than my truth. You know, there's two sides of the story. You know what I mean? So, I tried to to anything that was con- like conflict based or controversial, or you might have a different opinion than I did. I tried. I think we did a great job, and I'm not just saying that on my own. People have told me that. People in the community have said I think you did a great job of presenting Ed's side and Rain's side. You know what I mean? And let the audience decide. It's not on me to tell you what the truth is. I'm gonna present the facts or what I know is the facts and what I, you know the the evidence that I have. Yeah, I, I think you the, did a good job. The right? Evidence that I have and let you decide as the audience. You know, that's all I can do. That's all any filmmaker can do is provide the evidence that they found, which is not even always truth. You know, it's like I found this, I found that. What do you guys think? Yeah. No, I think I think for sure. Like uh, I remember at one point it was uh, discussing the origin of catastetics. Mm. And uh, some people said not New York. Some people said yeah. New York. And uh, you even traveled to ancient Greece because yeah. that's also something that's always thrown out there. It's right. like, you know, kind of started started Greece. And, right. uh, could you touch on that a bit? Yeah, that's yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. So the origins of calisthenics. Let's, let's do ancient and let's do modern. Okay. Uh, where do you want to start? I think uh, to take it from the very beginning. Like if someone said, where did calisthenics start? Okay, great. Because I think there's... So, I, I, I got it. I got it. Uh, ancient. I went to ancient Greece because that is the first recorded, documented uh, um, act of calisthenics. You know, which was the Battle of Thermopylae. We all know about four four hundred eighty BC. Uh, you know, the classic uh, Spartans battle. You know what I mean? The Spartans were doing this. Um, the Persians thought they. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, King. Uh, ah, I forget. Xerxes. Xerxes. Uh, and his crew saw them over the hill practicing calisthenics and thought they were dancing. They were doing flexibility exercises and stuff like that and thought they were dancing. It's like, what are these fools doing? Well, as we all know, the Spartans were, were pretty badass. Um, so that was the first documented thing. That doesn't, in my opinion, does not mean it was the first time we've seen it. It means it was the first documented. Now that, here we go. Now we're talking about, I'm documenting stuff. So history is, history is made by those who write it down and record it, yeah. right? So someone could have been doing it. In oh, Africa, I have no doubt. After each, think about the Egyptians. Yeah. Think about the Asians in martial arts culture. You know what I'm saying? So I have no doubts in my mind that, that, that they were because, again, what is calisthenics? You're talking about bodyweight exercises. You think somebody wasn't doing some... Is dance not, in a way? I mean, it's body movement. You know what I'm saying? So it's a very subjective term, I think, too. A very flexible, malleable term. 
So, yeah, but I have no doubt that there weren't tribes in Africa and Asia that did some sort of training for their bodies. You know what I mean? Um, so, that's definitely debatable. But what we can't debate is, well, no one's found the evidence yet, but there's documented, written evidence about the Greeks doing it. But this is going to be the first time that the Greeks may have borrowed something from another culture. There are older cultures. So, let's fast forward to where we are now. Similar circumstance. Uh, we're doing different things now, too. You know, there are different styles. There are different aspects and elements of calisthenics. So, uh, here's what I generally say. Because, in general, the West Coast crew uh, is a little more acrobatic in their gymnastics. Why? Let's think about that. Think about the hand balancing that was done in the early uh, 20th century that was on the beaches. You know what Jack I mean? Lane. Right. All them. Well, that was all. So now when you see our current West Coast crews doing those pyramids and those those flags off of each other with like five, seven people, that was done 100 years ago back there in those beaches. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or 70 years ago. So you can't tell them that that wasn't created there. It was. That's a part of it. What New York was doing was very New York, and as you know, very urban, very hip hop culture, if you will. You know what I mean? Like that style. It looked like breakdancing to me. You know, it was rough, it was raw, it was freestyle. It wasn't a hand balance. It was, I'm going to do this move and show you up. If that's not hip hop culture, I don't know what is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm bringing this style, you're bringing that style, we're going to battle. Like, my God, it's b boying, it's graffiti, it's all that. Battle rap. Right, it's battle rap. So, here's what I say that is, that is, you can't argue this. It's unequivocal, to, to, in my opinion. Um, New York influenced the culture, the community, you know? Uh, I'm not saying that it was the first to do a muscle-up by any means. It was the first to do a pull-up or anything. But New York had a style that is still emulated all over the world to this day, and so did other places. But if it weren't for New York, I think I can safely say we wouldn't be where we are today because New York got organized. New York had teams. New York had shirts. New York made it a community thing. No one else, they were just friends doing stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I think you can't argue that, that New York made the culture what it is now. You know what I mean? Just like you can't with rap. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I think it's a little easier to define hip hop coming yeah. from New York. Than it is calisthenics, but uh, I think I think my opinion. I think the problem was the the keeping of the name calisthenics. Right. So like you know like break dancing is still dancing. Yes. And if someone says they invented break dancing, doesn't mean they invented dancing. Correct. Same thing with rap. Rap is still music. You're 100 percent right. So you say you invented rap, you don't you don't necessarily mean you invented music. But because New York calisthenics kept the same calisthenics, even though you know it was different, mm -hmm. you know you don't see a. Ancient Greeks doing back clasps behind their back. No. Or people in uh, Santa Monica Beach doing like clasps behind their back no. and stuff like that. It was more gymnastics. Right. Or for right. the Greeks, it was more the basic exercises just to get stronger in mm -hmm. shape. And because New York kept the name Kyostarics, it's sort of switching into a, a different word. Mm -hmm. And there's always this confusion about where Kyostarics has started and you get this argument. And no one no one in New York thinks they invented a pull-up, right. push-up, dip, right. muscle-up, front lever, back lever. No one has that but idea. You and I have traveled the world and everyone we've seen was inspired by what yeah. was going on in New York because New York is a trendsetter for fashion, for music, for film, for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for everything. I mean, uh, pe people look up to it, you know what I mean? And uh, and you can't knock this, the style from it. I think that it definitely, what we know as today originated from New York out of, out of hip hop exactly. culture. Yeah. I'm not saying that they, they wouldn't have it, but New York, there's nobody I know that wasn't by you know we traveled all over the world you got somebody all the way on the other side of the world you know thank thankful for for youtube and facebook you know opening it up but i mean that's that's what it was they I mean, even took it out of hip-hop culture like zumba zumba's yeah. dancing yeah you know like no one says the, the person who invented zumba is not saying they invented dancing no they invented this very specific style of right. dancing. right absolutely um, so yeah, there was muscle ups done before, but it was the style. It was the style coming out yeah. of New York. You can't argue that. You can't argue that. I mean, and even people that may argue it now, if you trace back history a little bit, you've got them somewhere saying that There's they were inspired opinions, yeah. by they were inspired by New York. You know what I mean? They might not admit it now, but yeah, that's it's kind of ridiculous to argue that. To to be honest, I mean. And, uh, you know, a lot of people hated on the bartenders for a long time, but that was the first people to put a, to put a thing to it, to put a yeah. team to it. You know, as Doc from Wingate said in the movie, it's like there was a chance, a point in time where we all could have been bartenders. Yeah. 
but things happen the way they happen and you have different teams you know what I mean so that that was the the making it into a thing to a culture you can't argue that it was that it was New York like the culture that it is now obviously fitness culture and body weight fitness culture has existed because we didn't have weights and weightlifting and bodybuilding until not that long ago in, in modern history you know what I mean like you're talking about you know in the in the 20th century the mid 20th century you yeah. know it was like when that got popular and bodybuilding didn't get super popular until pumping iron in the 70s so you know what I mean like yeah. what do you think we were doing in the 30s and 40s you know I, mean, I got a picture <laughs> of my dad in the movie doing a flag in I don't know he was born in 39 it was probably late 50s in the late 50s so I mean, doing a human flag doing a human flag he was the only one in his school that could do it he was about nice. 19 yeah yeah so I threw that into shout out to Bob Bennett threw that into the movie somehow I probably didn't even need to be in it I was like I'm doing that it's my movie <laughs> but yeah 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 so I remember it was funny he's passed away now um, but uh, I remember before before he left I was getting into fitness and uh, he gave me that picture on the ro- and wrote it on the back of it he's like when you can do this you'll be a real Bennett man <laughs> and it's like I haven't done it yet but I definitely want to get a picture of me in a flag and like put it under him oh, you know cool. doing it yeah yeah it's something very special to me but yeah but that shows like he's from a poor poor uh, place in North Carolina he grew up dirt poor that's how he stayed in shape you know what I mean and he was an athlete he didn't lift weights you know what I mean so body weight exercise has been around for, since the dawn of time but not like this this is very something very simple. like you said break dance and dance has been around forever you know yeah, as a kid, I didn't know. I we didn't have computers or anything. We just we did pull ups on a light pole. Yeah, I seen one day someone go side to side. I guess I go side to side, legs up and stuff. Then YouTube came and you see like the muscle ups and mm-hmm. clap behind your back and all that crazy stuff. And, and I was it, it took it to another level, but it was yeah. definitely something that was going on for a long time. Um, yeah, so we've been talking for a while. Uh, <laughs> When does the movie come out? Where yeah. can people find it? How can people see it? And uh, yeah, anything else you want to let people know? Uh, yeah, the movie comes out March 14th on iTunes and Amazon. We definitely need everybody's help in the community, like reviewing it, you know, uh, leaving a review, five giving stars. it five stars because we're trying to get this culture out there and continue to grow it like all you guys are. So uh, the way to do that is get it number one on documentary, get it number one on health and fitness, you know what I mean, on Amazon so people can, can see it. That's how you get traction and see it. So March 14th, uh, the pre-orders go on sale uh, February 1st. And um, we'll have it iTunes and Amazon. We'll also have it on our site. We, are, we do have DVDs. Most people don't want DVDs these days. Um, but some people do, you know, like my mom's going to want a DVD, <laughs> so she's going to get one. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's been a long journey. I'm excited about it, but really excited to, uh, to get it out to people. We toured it around the country in 2016 and had an amazing response from the younger, like the 20 year olds on the West coast, the 40 year olds on the East coast that, that are the legends of the game. Uh, random 60 year old women who don't care about calisthenics children like everybody ha- has loved it the soundtrack is banging we're gonna yeah, I love it. I love the, soundtrack. the soundtrack is gonna be in, we're making a bundle this is something that I haven't told anybody yet so exclusive, exclusive. for the Bar <laughs> Stars uh, viewers we're making a, a physical bundle uh, or a digital bundle and a physical bundle that you can buy on the website which will include three chapters of Dr. G's audiobook get it in not injured we're gonna have a world bar map so that you can track where you where you train you know, print, have it out on your wall. And if you've been to LA or you've been to New York or you've been to, to, to uh, Moscow, um, we're going to have uh, the soundtrack and the movie. And I think maybe one more thing as a bundle that we're going to sell too. Um, so look out for that. But uh, it's all been a community effort. I raised money through the audience and the viewers um, and the fans. And um, I want to continue that. So I need your help like you've helped me through this whole process to get it out there to the community perfect i look forward to sharing it with you guys definitely check the link in the bio i'll be just i'll be updating that with the info thank you for watching thanks guys I've never been a brother, I've never been a son, I've disappointed so many people. I have to give something back. And I just want to share with other people. I want other people to experience the, the greatness I felt from this. What we're doing is just use this sport as a tool to prepare these, these kids 
to the real world. This isn't about winning a game. This is about winning in life because you're improving yourself. So that's why I think that this is such a life-changing movement that will take over the world. Let's move. Jack LaLanne said, what you're doing has never been done in fitness history. Years ago, there was no such thing as extreme calisthenics. You can go to a park, you can find a pull-up bar. You can go on, on a corner and find a light post. In this time, in the workout area, it was needed. I mean, obviously, it didn't start in New York. There's no question that this started in New York City. I crush anybody. One, one, two, stand still now. What we going to Look at these guys as superheroes, and they want to be like them. Move, just move, just move, just move, just move, just move. We ready to go down the hall and get this shit popping. Over here in the U.S. is chaos. More than just your head and your chair. Y'all keep that game. Move earth, move people, move sand, move water, move plans, write it out, stand. No one really can tell who started Russia, USA or someone. Now when I see different competitions happening in the United States, I see the Russian move there. No, this ain't your game, people. This is our game, created right here in the renaissance of Harlem. Them dudes can't mess with us. Nah, I'm the one with enough bars for eight folders. The only one who could black out. Dudes ain't that nice. They got this for me. They stealing our stuff. Say not stuff to steal, y'all bugging. It was becoming less sport and more showman. Is it gonna be the kind of side where TV is gonna blow it up and it's gonna become a kind of circus? One and the same, I'm uh, let it go. Uh, uh, one, two, one, well, one, two, stand still now. What we gonna do? Everybody just move, 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 just move. And when that point comes where it's about money, we've all lost. If we can, you know, keep it that family thing, you know, keep that handshake and that hug, we're cool.